right, so we have a demon seed soldered on to a USB A connector. Next step here is to program a very basic payload onto this. That way you can get started with playing around with this. The Digispark platform already pretty well documents most of this, so I'm just gonna point you at the resources that already exist instead of just walking through uh, additional videos for that. Uh, but basically, you're gonna set up Arduino IDE. Uh, you're gonna set up the boards and libraries for the Digispark within that IDE. And at that point, we're gonna be right here. So you go into File, Examples, in the Digispark section, there's a Digispark keyboard. Open up the keyboard file. The example's super basic. It's got nothing in the setup, and in the loop area, it's got a single key digit keyboard print line that's outputting whatever text you want, and a loop that has it going every five seconds. So there's two lines up in the setup that we have to add to make the demon seed work. That's uh, setting pin two to output and then setting it high. After that, demon seed is gonna work for the rest of the payload. Before we can program this, you're gonna wanna check under the tools menu that first of all, the board that is selected is the Digispark, specifically the 16.5 megahertz variety, and you can ignore the port. Under the programmer, make sure you've selected Micronucleus. At that point, you can hit upload. So this is gonna compile. It's gonna ask you to plug in the device, gives you 60 seconds to do so. And within five seconds of plugging it in, this is gonna be looking for the programming request. Now, I recommend using a cheap USB hub because you don't know the state of your soldering job yet. This will help protect your computer against any shorts or bad things that may have happened. So you plug this in, and if all goes well, there we go. So done uploading, it's gonna tell you that Micronucleus completed successfully, and it's already typing inside of my window, as you can see, so CD over and over again. Uh, that, I mean, that's it, that's, that's a successful setup. Now, if it didn't work this way, Check a few things. Uh, check that you don't have any shorts. There's only four connections that you made. So get out your multimeter, just make sure the four are not bridged together. Use some flux to clean it up if so. Uh, another thing you should check is to make sure your fuses are set properly from the prior work we did. Those fuses are important. There's a lot of uh, keyboard injection techniques and payloads that you can explore. So at this point, it's worth talking about how a lot of this is working. This doesn't have USB, as I mentioned, but so how does, how does that work? When people say a certain piece of hardware doesn't have USB, especially a chip doesn't have USB, they generally mean that there's no built-in hardware controller for that type of communication. And that's true, this does not have USB. Uh, but ultimately, what what communications are, are the, the lines moving between high and low levels of voltage. On, in terms of USB, that's gonna be zero volts or 3.3 volts. And it moves between them up and down to uh, send bits of a signal out. There's um, something called VUSB that uh, it's got a lot of really magical work done behind it. That's all software, software implemented communications, uh, commonly referred to as bit banging. You're banging out individual bits via software. So it's probably a good time to pull out the oscilloscope and check out what that looks like on the lines. I'm gonna use the Arduino sketch that is up on my screen. So we're gonna use uh, pin one and we're gonna set it to output. In our loop, we're going to set pin one to high, delay one millisecond, set it to low, delay one millisecond, and keep looping that. So I'm gonna push this program to the demon seed. You can actually see it go across the oscilloscope really quickly. 
there we go. We can see the square wave that we've created here. This is pin one, low, high, low, high, just on loop. Let's, uh, let's just double that high delay and leave the low at one. Let the program take. And now we can see the change here. It's high for about twice as long as it's low. So via software, we are able to manipulate the high and the low output to this pin and on the data lines, or in this case, we're just attached to the pin, but the, uh, the pins themselves are gonna create a signal that looks like this. So what I'm gonna do is actually change this payload just to make it nice and simple and rapidly repeating. It's a little easier to see when it's the same thing over and over again. And I'm gonna hook up this oscilloscope to one of the two data lines. All right, so this is the keystroke happening right here. The letter A repeatedly being typed over and over again. So let's zoom in a little bit. And these are the square waves of the USB communication occurring here. We are emulating a keyboard here. Um, it's about you know, timing, the pattern. There's a lot of uh, a lot of layers here to follow through, but just want to kind of give you a glimpse at what what is going on on these lines. There's some you know, timing and things like that that you got to pay attention to, packet orders, and just the the way it's constructed. But as long as you know what that's supposed to be, you can emulate it. Um, as long as you can move quick enough. So that's the thing about the AT Tiny. The speed at which you can bit bang something is dependent on the speed of the chip you're using. That's kind of the trick with the AT Tiny is it's a fairly slow chip. So we've only got enough power to emulate a low speed USB device. Now low speed is 1.5 megahertz. Next step up is full speed and that is uh, 12 megahertz. And that kind of leads into what we were doing in that setup with setting pin two as output and setting it high. Normally, USB devices that are created out of uh, AT Tiny's have a pull-up tied directly to the voltage line. The pull-ups on these lines are how a device identifies itself to a host. Now, if there is a pull up on the D minus line, that tells the host that we are a low speed device. If we moved it to the D plus line, we would be trying to identify ourselves as a full speed 12 megahertz device. And that's, that's the very start of USB negotiation. So without that pulled up, we can't say that we're anything on those lines. Not by the spec anyway. But what if you want control over that? What if you don't want to always be immediately telling the host that you're a low speed device? That is why instead of tying that resistor between the data pin and the VCC line, we've tied it from the data line to another pin on the AT Tiny, specifically pin two. So what that allows us to do is on demand with software, decide when we want to pull the data pin high or not pull it high. So now we have started the pathway of adding more control in terms of how the host sees us, which is going to come into play later. Next up, we're gonna touch on the RF aspects of DMC.